Hi everyone. Welcome to our learning video sessions on Microsoft Excel for Chemical Engineers. This is our 12th video lesson. This video lesson teaches how to use Microsoft Excel software for energy balance calculations in chemical engineering. The general energy balance equation can be written as Accumulation of energy within the system is equal to transfer of energy into system through system boundary minus transfer of energy out of system through system boundary plus energy generation within system minus energy consumption within system. We can simply indicate the equation in symbolic form as E accumulation is equal to E in minus E out plus E generation minus E consumption. Here capital E indicates energy. We can further simplify the general energy balance equation into delta E is equal to Q plus W minus delta H minus delta PE minus delta KE. Here Q indicates energy transfers to or from the system. W indicates work done on or by the system. Delta H indicates change in enthalpy. Delta PE indicates change in potential energy and Delta KE indicates changes in kinetic energy. The energy balance equation reduces to different equations based on the system behavior. The most commonly applied systems are closed systems, open systems with heat transfer into and out of the process, open steady state flow systems. For a closed system, no mass flow occurs in or out of the system. So, delta E is equal to Q plus W. If there is no reaction or accumulation, Delta E is equal to zero. Then the energy balance equation simplifies into Q is equal to minus W. For an open system with heat transfer, Delta E, W, Delta PE and Delta KE can be neglected compared to Q and Delta H. So the equation reduces into Q is equal to Delta H. If no heat is transferred into or out of the system, that means Q is equal to zero. Then, delta H is equal to zero. An open steady state system is essentially isothermal. So, delta E, delta H and Q are zero. So, the energy balance equation reduces into W is equal to delta PE plus delta KE. In order to understand how to use Microsoft Excel software for the overall energy balance of a system, let's discuss an example problem including overall material and energy balance principles that we have learned so far. The increase in the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has led to numerous proposals to capture carbon dioxide prior to atmospheric emissions. An inventor has developed a new catalyst that can make the gas phase reaction between carbon dioxide and hydrogen to convert carbon dioxide into methane and water. The source of the hydrogen would be from the electrolysis of water using electricity generated from solar cells. 1.5 mole of carbon dioxide enter the reactor at 
700 degree Celsius together with 4 mole of hydrogen at 100 degree Celsius at 1 atm pressure. The exit gases leave at 1 atm pressure and 500 degree Celsius and the heat of reaction has been found as 79 kilojoule. Find the conversion of carbon dioxide in the reactor. Before solving any energy balance problem, we must try to understand the system and the given data. From the description, we can understand that this is an open system with reaction. The system is not isothermal, so there is a heat, that means capital Q, transferred into and from the system. So if we apply the energy balance equation for this system, delta E, W, delta PE and delta KE will be zero. And the final energy balance equation is enthalpy balance, that is delta H is equal to Q. We have prepared tables to perform calculations in a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. At first, we have to apply the material balance and find the product mole flow rates. But we don't know the exact conversion of this reactor. In fact, finding the exact conversion of carbon dioxide is the solution required in this problem. Therefore, manual calculation would be difficult for this kind of a problem. But now we are quite familiar with iterative calculations in Microsoft Excel software. So we can solve this easily in Excel. First, let's assume a value for the conversion. Let's say 60% conversion of carbon dioxide. Then the degrees of freedom for the reactor will be zero and we can find the product mole flows of each component. We can find the extent of reaction with respect to carbon dioxide as zero point nine mole. From the standard heats of formation of the four components, we can find the standard heat of this reaction. Note that standard heat of reaction means the heat of reaction at 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. The standard heats of formation at 25 degrees Celsius for carbon dioxide, water and methane can be found from enthalpy tables. Natural components like hydrogen, oxygen nitrogen have zero standard heat of formation as you already learnt. The heat of reaction at 25 degrees Celsius in this reactor can be found by multiplying the standard heat of reaction by the extent of reaction. The extent of reaction based on the assumed conversion of 60% is 0 0.9 mole. Now we have to prepare another table to find the sensible heats for this gaseous reaction. We have been given that carbon dioxide enters the reactor at 700 degrees Celsius and hydrogen enters at 100 degrees Celsius. All the product gases are at 500 degrees Celsius. We have already learnt how to calculate the heat capacities of different components and use the integration to calculate sensible heats using Microsoft Excel software. You can have a look at our lesson 11, that is the previous lesson, if you forgot how to calculate sensible heats. If not, 
There are enthalpy tables to find the sensible heats at different temperatures. So we are not going to show you how to find the sensible heats for this example. Hence, we have directly entered the specific sensible heats at 700 degrees Celsius for carbon dioxide, at 100 degrees Celsius for hydrogen, and all components at 500 degrees Celsius into the table in this Excel spreadsheet. So we have to multiply each sensible heat value by the feed and product mole flows of each component. Let's say the sensible heat of feed stream as sensible heat into the system and the sensible heat of the product stream as sensible heat out of the system. So we can easily calculate the sum of the sensible heat into and out of the system in this Excel spreadsheet. You can understand that we can use the same methodology in Excel software for even a more complex system with more components and more equipment in addition to the reactor. So learning how to use Excel software for these calculations is advantageous in our future design calculations. Okay, now let's calculate the final answer for the heat of reaction for this problem. That is, the sum of the heat of reaction at 25 degrees Celsius and the sensible heat in and out. Now we have the final answer for the heat of reaction for this system. But this answer is not equal to the heat of reaction given in the problem description. That is because initially we assume the conversion of carbon dioxide as 60%. So we can enter another calculation cell to find the difference between the calculated heat of reaction and the actual heat of reaction. Then let's apply the goal seek tool in Excel software to find the conversion value at the difference of calculated and actual heats of reaction to be zero. Here we can see the final answer for the correct conversion of carbon dioxide is closer to 40%. Like this, you can use Microsoft Excel software as a helping tool for numerous calculations in chemical engineering for material and energy balance of different systems. As a summary, in this video lesson, we learned the basics of energy balance and how to use Microsoft Excel software to easily calculate energy balance problems. We discussed an example with an open system, including reaction, to see how to perform iterative calculations combined with material and energy balance calculations. So that's the end of our 12th video lesson. Have a nice day and goodbye.